All right, so it's chapter four, section two. The name of this is compare and order rational numbers. Okay, so before we uh, before we get too far, we have to identify what rational numbers are. We're going to start with a quick review. Whole numbers. These are the first numbers you were probably introduced to in like first, second grade. Um, whole numbers are things like one, two, three. Integers. Integers we talked about not too long ago. Um, integers are basically the whole numbers and the negatives of them. So we have negative one versus one, two, negative five, and so on. And rational numbers, rational numbers are numbers that can be, doesn't mean they have to be, but can be expressed as a fraction. So basically, rational numbers are all the whole numbers, the integers, and also the numbers that can be written as a fraction. So things like 20% because 20% is really 20 over 100. Decimals, 0 0.8, 8 tenths, that can be written as a fraction. Things like 5, 5 can be written as a fraction, 5 over 1. Next thing we need to review and go over um, in order to compare and order rational numbers is common denominator. A common denominator. Common denominator is when you have two or more fractions and they have the same denominator. They have the same denominator, they have it in common, that's where we get it from, common denominator. So what we can do is we can write fractions or rewrite them so the denominator denominators are the same. So, for example, let's say we needed to compare 3 fifths and 8 over 15, 8 fifteenths. Well, what we can do is we can rewrite these fractions. They'll still have the same value, but we'll rewrite them with different denominators so they're easy to compare. The fractions, each one of these fractions will still be worth the same amount. It's just like if I wrote one half and then I rewrote it as five over ten, half a pizza or five out of ten slices, either way it's the same amount of pizza. So this is the same value, it's just rewritten. These are equivalent. So we're going to rewrite an equivalent fraction here so that these have common denominators. Now there's two ways to do this. Easiest way to do it, just to get a common denominator alone, is look at your two denominators and just multiply them. For example, if I look at these two denominators and I say, okay, 5 and 15. 5 times 15, and that equals 75. So I'm going to rewrite these both with denominators of 75. Now, how do I go from 5 to 75? I multiply by 15. And if I multiply by 15 here, what I do on bottom, I have to do on top. So 15 times 3 is 45. Yep. And over here, 15 times 5 equals 75. Well, if I multiply by 5 here, I have to multiply by 5 here. And 8 times 5 is 40. So now that I have these rewritten with the same denominators, I can easily compare it. Would I rather have 45 out of 75 slices of pizza or 40 out of 75? Would well, I rather have this so this is bigger? Now, that's with common denominators. Another way you can do it is with what's referred to as the least common denominator. And the least common denominator, just like the name implies, is the common denominator, but it's the smallest one possible. So, again, let's take a look at these same fractions. If I had 3 fifths and 8 over 15. Same exact ones. Well, 
easiest way to find this when you have two fractions, look at the denominators and you say, okay, the biggest one can obviously go into itself. 15 can go into itself. Can the smaller fraction go into that? And if the answer is yes, then use that bigger fraction. So 5 goes into 15, how many times, class? Three. Three times. So we know we're going to use 15 as our common denominator. Since this isn't changing, I can go ahead and write the 8. Well, to go from here to here, I had to multiply by 3. And if I do that on bottom, I do that on top. 3 times 3 is 9. So now I can compare these two fractions. I've got 9 fifteenths versus 8 fifteenths. This is more, so 3 fifths is going to be more than 8 fifteenths. Um, sometimes, sometimes when you're trying to compare and order numbers, a number line might help you. The textbook's going to recommend number lines every now and then. It's not going to say you have to do it, but it has a number line there if you want to fill it out. Basically, what you need to know when you're comparing and ordering things is this one rule. The greater number is always to the right on a number line. And I'll explain what I mean. Draw a little number line. Now, if you had numbers like, I don't know, 10 and 5, well, obviously you know 10 is more than 5, so the number to the right is greater. And obviously, 5 is more than 0, so the number to the right is greater. Now let's put a negative number in here. Let's say this is negative 4. Well, think of negative numbers as money you owe somebody. You know, maybe you borrowed 4 bucks from somebody. Now you owe them 4, so you're at negative 4. Would you rather be at $0, you don't owe anybody anything, but you got nothing, or would you rather be at negative 4? You'd rather be here. You'd rather be at $0 than be in debt to somebody. Now, let's add another negative number, negative 9. Would you rather owe somebody $4 or owe somebody 9? You'd rather only owe them 4. The number to the right is always greater. The next thing for number lines is when you have fractions. Let's say we wanted to graph... Let's say we wanted to graph... 1 and 1 fifth and 1 and 3 fifths. Okay? Well, both numbers start at 1 and then it goes up by fifths until we get to 2. So this next increment, let's say this would be 1 and 1 fifth. This is 1 and no fifths. This is 1 and 1 fifth. This is 1 and 2 fifths. 1 and 3 fifths. 1 and 4 fifths, 1 and 5 fifths, and boys and girls, 5 over 5 is a whole, so 1 and a whole makes 2, so I can rewrite this just as 2. So I've got 1 here, 2 here, these are my fifths, so 1 and 1 fifth would be right here, 1 and 3 fifths would be right here, 1 and 3 fifths is greater, because the number's to the right on a number line. Now, Sometimes we'll make comparisons and they'll just give us fractions or percents. My recommendation is to try and turn everything into their decimal equivalents and compare accordingly. So for example, let's say we were comparing 20% and 5 over 29 and we wanted to know, you know greater than, less than, or equal to. Well, 20% we're going to rewrite is 20 over 100 and 20 over 100 if you did the division in your calculator is 0 0.2 5 over 29 if you did that in your calculator 5 divided by 29 we get this 0 0.1724 Now, to compare decimals, I recommend writing them one on top of the other, and then you're going to look from left to right, just like you read words or you read a book, and you're going to look for a difference in the numbers. Whichever one's bigger first is bigger. 
So for example, I look here in the whole number spot, I've got 0 and 0, so no difference there. I look in the tenth place. This is 2, this is 1. That makes this one bigger, which makes 20% bigger. Another way to think about this, remember with decimals you can always add a 0 to the end. So if I was trying to make these like prices, this would be 20 cents versus 17 cents. Another example, sometimes they're going to want you to order things. So let's say the question says order, and a lot of times they like to say from least to greatest. Sometimes it's the other way around. So make sure that you're reading these directions. If it says greatest to least and you do it backwards, you'll get it wrong. So let's say we had the following numbers. Let's say we had 3.44 uh, pi and 3.4 with bar notation over that 4. So let's see. I'm going to write them stacked just like I did in that example. So I've got 3.44. I've got pi. Pi you should know. It's 3.14. That's the decimal equivalent should be review. And the next one, 3.4 with bar notation. So I've got 3.4, but since it's bar notation, what's the next number going to be, class? Four. 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 And that looks the same as this. So what's the next number going to be? Four. Four. Now, what can I write at the end of any decimal? Mm -hmm. Zero, if there's no bar notation. So I can put at the end of this one zero. Now when I go to put these in order, I've got 3, 3, and 3, so I have no differences there. Here, see how I've got a 1 here? Mm -hmm. That makes this one, which was pi, that makes this our smallest number. So I'm going to make that. I'm going to mark that that's in the number 1 spot. And you can cross it out because you used it if you want. Now it's down to these other two. I've got 4 here and 4 here. I've got 4 here and 4 here. And now I finally have my difference. Since this was a terminating decimal, I added a 0 to the end. Since this was a repeating decimal, all I could add was a 4 to the end. So that makes this one smaller and this one greater. So this would be in the number 2 posi uh, position, the number 2 spot, and this would be in the number 3 spot. So the correct order from least to greatest is going to be pi, then 3.44, then 3.4 with bar notation. And that is how you order rational numbers. And that's how you compare and order them.